Hello and welcome back to part two of our look at tiled clones in Inkscape. If you haven't seen part one, then click on the link above and watch that first. So what's the next one? We've done rotation. Next one's blur and opacity. So blur and opacity work in a very similar way. Um, you can change the percentage of blur on each row or column. So if we did 10% on the blur, it slowly blurs out completely. We can add alternate that. So it would blur, unblur, blur, unblur. Um, you can add in random element. We could put 10 in here. This gives us this slightly randomized effect. We could, well, you could if you wanted, you could delete that and say put a 50% on here and it adjust. So now this is completely randomized or 50% randomized. So each one's a random percentage of blur. So with 100%, as you repeatedly click create, it changes the random blur. So opacity works in exactly the same way. Um, let's get rid of that for a minute. So opacity, we can do the 10% opacity again. So they slowly disappear as you go round. You can stick in the alternate. I might have to make the opacity slightly more. So they're quite self-explanatory. Um, what's the next one? Let's get rid of that to get us back to our original state. So the next tab is color. In here we've got hue, which is the color, saturation, which is the intensity of the color, and lightness. Um, we can adjust each of these by row or by column. We can add the random element. We can alternate. But for these to work, we first have to unset the color of our original tile. So if we press remove to get rid of all the rest. So we've got original tile. We go into fill and stroke. And in here at the top, we can see we've got flat color selected. So if we go along, there's a question mark at the end. This question mark unsets the color of the paint. So if we click on that, go back to our clones box, we've got initial color. So we can uh, left click on this and then we can just adjust the initial color to whatever we want it to be. I'll leave it on red for the time being. We could then adjust, let's get rid of that box. We could then adjust the hue, say by 10%. Now, when we create, we get the colors changing 10% each time. So you could, do this, or we could, let's put the 10 back on, we could do this, add a bit of a random element, we could add another 10% random element, create, so this just adds a random element to the colouring. We could do it with saturation or lightness, so we get rid of hue, get rid of the random element, and we have 10% saturation. So, a bit hard to see, let's increase that. What I'll do is I'll reduce the saturation in our original colour. So now when we create, it should get brighter as it goes. So there we go. So now we can see the increase in saturation. Uh, lightness. I'll bring that up nice and bright again. Lightness, if we take it down. Um, so we get rid of our 10, 20% saturation. And we are do a 10% increase in the lightness so now when we create we start dark and get lighter and lighter so that's color so the last tab we need to take a look at is trace trace allows us to take information from an image uh, below our tiles and use that to affect how the tiles appear so i'm going to just press reset to clear off information from our previous little projects we need to click on the trace the drawing under the clones tick box to enable this we've got three different sections down here we've got the first one is pick from the drawing so this tells us uh, which item of the image below that we're going to use for our information so we can either use color we can use the opacity we can use red green or blue we can use hue saturation or lightness so for the first example i think we're, we'll start with color 
So the second section is tweaking the values, the selected values. So you can do gamma correction here, which I'm not going to cover. Um, randomization, just add a bit of random element. And again, we can invert the value. So the third section just allows us to dictate how we want the value that we've collected from our image below to affect the clones that we're creating. So the first one is presence. This is a probability of whether or not the clone is going to be created or the tile is going to be created. Um, the second one is color. So we can take the color and use the color value. Third one is size. So we can use the um, value from the color to uh, adjust the size or we can use it to affect the opacity of our tiles. So for now, I'll just put it on color. I think we'll take off size. So to get started, we need to import a picture for us to use. So come up, import, open this. OK, the settings. And we have an image that we can use. So now I need to create a tile that we can use. So I'm going to just draw out a rectangle um, in shift. I'm just going to put, give it 10% spacing between our tiles. Uh, rotation, I'm just going to add a little bit of random rotation. Trace, we're using the color and it's going to add the color to our tile. One thing we do need to do is just go in and just check that we've got it on um, unset, the color on unset. At the moment, it's on flat color. So if we go to unset, we can come back out. Now, hopefully everything's done. So we can just press our create. And that creates our tiles. So we need a few more um, columns and a few more rows. So if in the rows we do say 15 and we do say 20 columns, create. So that covers most of our image. If we take our image below and remove it, you can see that you can create a nice mosaic effect using this method. Um, if you use more tiles, it creates a better, more realistic effect. So here I've just reduced the size of the tile and increased the number. And with the small, smaller tiles, you can see we're getting a better image appearing. So that's one way we can use our trace element. So we can create this mosaic effect. We can also use it as presence. So if we click on the presence, I'll turn the color off for the time being. So this time when we do it, it will, the figure that it gets from the color image below, it will use as a probability of whether or not that tile is going to be created. So if we press create, now you can see some of these tiles are missing. So the probability of it not creating a tile is higher when the color is lower, or sorry, the color is brighter. So that's presence. We can affect the size. So again, if we press create, so now you can see as the colors get lighter, the size of the tile is smaller. So we can use this for making the halftone effect. That's one of the examples at the beginning. So if we shift all this over to the side for a minute, we get our ellipse tool. Oh, we hold down control to constrain it to a circle. I'm going to come up to fill and stroke. I'm going to change it to a radial gradient. I'm going to come in and get our gradients tool. Now, because I'm using color, all of this is black, but it's just the opacity that's varying. So what we need to do is change the end stop from transparent to white. So now the color's changing. So it starts off dark in the middle and then gets gradually smaller towards the outside. I'm going to add in an extra stop and that I'm going to darken up a bit. I might bring it out a little bit. 
and I'll get the selection tool. I'm just going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on the X to get rid of the stroke. So now we've got a shape or an image underneath. We want a tile to go over the top. So for my tile, I'm just going to draw out a small circle and we'll move that up to probably about 10 by 10 would do us. If we go back to our, our clones down to the bottom, we'll make it 10 by 10. We're taking from the color and this time we're affecting the size. So now, so if we just go and change um, the shift, we can leave the same. What else do we have? Rotation. We'll take rotation off because that makes no difference to a circle. And we'll press create. Clearly by 10 by 10 wasn't big enough. So if we make it 20 by 20, press create, then we get this effect. So as you can see, it's taking the color and it's using that color to adjust the size of our circles or our tiles. What we could do is if we created a square or a rectangle, come up to fill and stroke, we change it to white, we drop it to the back, get our selection tool, drop it to the bottom. So now we've dropped that to the bottom, we need to select our original tile. We can remove the effect and if we press create now, because now we've got white underneath, it should just put in the tiles over the top of our colored area. So there we go. So now we've created this half tone effect. If we want to set these clones so they can't be adjusted when we alter the um, original tile, we can do this by, let's just move this original tile out of the way for a minute. I'm gonna grab a node tool. I'm gonna select all of our cloned objects. I'm then going to come up to edit, down to clone, and I'm going to come down to unlink clone. So we click on this, that unlinks all of our little clones. So now if we adjust our original tile, it doesn't affect the clones, their items in their own right. So the last option we got is opacity. Um, that's quite self-explanatory. So the lighter the color, the, um, the more transparent our tile will be. You can experiment with the other ones. that They just take a, a number value for each of the elements. So you can try using other elements, the red, green or blue or hue, saturation or lightness. And the value from those will affect whatever element that you select down here for your uh, tiled clone. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.